Hi, I'm Michael Swain. I'm a senior research fellow at the Quincy Institute for Responsible Statecraft, uh, working in the East Asia program. Before joining Quincy, I was nearly 20 years a senior fellow at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. And before that, I worked at the RAND Corporation, all during which I uh, studied primarily China-related security topics of various types. But what do I think more broadly about the handling of U.S. national security concerns regarding China. Um, in general, I think the United States is handling these security concerns rather poorly. If you take the United States government in general, not just the administration, the Congress is now, by and large, uh, really at every opportunity, hyperventilating about the threat that China poses to the United States and the global order and the world, the West, democracy, etc. Uh, we can see this kind of hyperbolic response, uh, most evident in the recent hearing of the new House Select Committee on China, uh, where the members really sought to try to outdo themselves uh, in their efforts to bash and criticize China uh, and, and go after it in a variety of different ways. So the administration is also not doing very much to try to counter these kinds of excesses that we're seeing in the Congress and that were that are being sent out not just to the Chinese, but to our friends and allies. In general, Washington and Beijing both are caught in a kind of web of domestic politics, the securitization of virtually all aspects of their relationship, and a resulting deepening level of, as I say, worst case driven suspicion over the, motiva the motivations and tensions of either side. Neither side is willing to acknowledge these factors that both sides contribute to a negative interactive dynamic. Now, the US and China have tried to have crisis communication dialogues, but they haven't gotten very far. Um, and each time some kind of major incident occurs, uh, one or the other side will suspend the dialogue. So what you need here is you need to have a serious discussion by both sides about how they look at crisis management. Uh, the two sides don't really agree on how they interpret the function and the value of crisis management. They need to get to some common understanding, and then they need to really talk about what kinds of reciprocal assurances and mechanisms could they put in place that would reduce crisis management. I mean, we, uh, that would increase the ability of the two sides to reduce crises and improve their crisis management capabilities. Um, they really do need to include civilians and talk about perceptions, misperceptions, processes on both sides that undermine the ability of the two sides to really uh, engage in effective crisis management. So all of those things are needed in addition to the substantive dialogues um, on all the sorts of issues where the two sides have differences and where they also need to cooperate to address common threats.